Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 3 p.m. here in New Vienna, Iowa. That means it's time for another live stream. And today is Friday, December 11th, 2020. Good to be back, guys. Sorry, I missed out on the live stream yesterday. Totally forgot. Uh, and we had it scheduled like a week ahead of time. Uh, that I had to take the dog to the vet yesterday. He had some, he had two things that he needed to do. He needed some updates on some shots. I thought he was out of date on his rabies shot. So I was really concerned about that. But uh, he was, he still has another year to go on that. But he got two other, one was for kennel cough and one was for something else. I don't remember. But also he's been having problems with his ear, which he tends to have. So he needed uh, to get looked at and um, we got some medication for him. So he's he's doing fine. So, uh, but yeah, I had to do that. And the time that they could see him was three o'clock. I think every time that I've gone to this vet, it, the appointments are always like three o'clock. I mean, they, I, I think they close at like five, but usually three o'clock is the time. And I figured out yesterday, I think the reason for that is because the vet does like the, his like, uh, what do they call it? When the doctor visits, uh, house calls. They do house calls, but at farms. So like yesterday, the, they were like, oh, sorry, the vet's running a little bit late. He's out on a farm call still. So I don't know if they're going to like inoculate cows or something, you know, like give them shots or something or what. But that's what they're doing uh, because that's what vets do around here, I think. So that's why I had to be at three o'clock. Sorry about that. All right. Let's see who's here today. First, let's say hi, everyone, to, to everyone though listening on the podcast. Hopefully, you guys are having a good run. And everyone watching on YouTube after the fact, welcome. Glad to have you here. All right. In, here live, though, we've got already 46 people in here. Awesome. And we've got Patrick Fong saying, well, okay, good afternoon. All right. Love the dad joke. Yeah, I've got some noon here today for the uh, happy hour. It's part of like the whole bunch is like the variety packs of like um, just different drinks, uh, sports drinks, recovery drinks. And um, with it being wintertime, you know, I've been exploring some of like the uh, immunity, vitamin C. Um, what is it? What was the other one called? I forget. Those kinds like airborne, you know, those kinds of things. So continuing the exploration. I've had one of these flavors before this one. I haven't had this flavor before, I don't think so. We'll, we'll test them out both today. Um, Terrence Huey says, Feliz Viernes a todos. Awesome. Luis Pacer says, hey, que, ondo, que onda, Confusions. I'm not sure what that means, but I think I get the gist. <laughs> Stevie 76 says, driving to Biloxi to run with Des. Very cool. That's awesome. Terrence says, my SSS is and my SSD died, so I'll be reinstalling Windows 10 and all my drivers. Yay. That sounds terrible. I'm just trying to say that's a horrible way to spend a Friday afternoon. Or maybe it's a good way. Maybe it's kind of like, all right, leave me alone because I got like this giant thing to do. So like everyone give me some peace. Maybe, you know, so I, I could see, maybe there's a blessing in there. But I'm sorry to hear that your SSD died. That's um, always a nightmare. Daniel says it's going to be late today, but heard in an REI camping video that noon tablets work well as drink mixers when making cocktails while camping. I like that idea. Here's my funny noon story. Uh, it was at the, after the Indianapolis Marathon one year, uh, or the only year that I ran it. I think that would have been 2018. So I ran the Indianapolis Marathon, and um, I'm in the kind of like the finish area, you know, uh, like after like the immediate corral. So we're kind of walking back. Everyone's kind of like getting their stuff back on. And then all of a sudden, this woman kind of like collapses, not like completely falls to her face, but like she kind of like, like collapsed and like leaned on to someone else that was kind of standing near me. And we were like, oh boy, what's going on here? And we're trying to get her to sit down like on, like there were a couple of like ledges and, and spaces you could kind of like sit. Um, we had her sit down and we're like, oh, you should probably get, do you have some water? Let's drink some water. It looks like you're cramping up. Let's get some, uh, do you have any electrolytes? Let's get some electrolytes in you, salt tablets or anything like that. She goes, I got salt tablets, but they're like, I can't reach him right now. And so someone's like, I got a noon tablet. So he gives her the noon tablet. Um, and she just goes out and tries to eat the whole thing. And we're like, no, 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 don't eat it. Don't eat it. You don't eat it. You have to put it in your water. Do you have a water bottle? She's like, here's my water bottle. Cause they had given us water bottles. Like as you finish, but the noon tablet was so big, you know, it doesn't fit in a water bottle top. So like someone had to break it for it and then put it in there. And then she had to drink it. And she was just looking at us the whole time. Like, I collapsed on the completely wrong group of guys. <laughs> so I was like, I mean, I didn't know any of the other people. It was just people I was around, but um, very, very, very funny. She was fine after that. She just needed a minute. She was super cramped up um, after the marathon, but she was just fine after that. I think very eager to get, get on her way <laughs> after that experience, almost eating a nude tablet. 
because let's let's take a look at one of these. So this is the flavor that I had before. This one's blueberry tangerine. Uh, it says it's for immune support, sick, stressed, or on the go with complete electrolytes and antioxidants. Noon is your back to balanced water. See, now the reason why I like the noon versus the airborne that I've been drinking lately is the airborne says you take it once a day, which I'm like, that's fine. It's nice you only take it once. But I also like, I, I look for ways to like encourage myself to stay hydrated because if I don't, I end up just drinking coffee all day. So this is something that you can add to 16 ounces of water, which I usually add it to a little bit less than that. I don't think it makes a huge difference. And on the box here, it says you can drink these up to six times daily. So like that kind of, I mean, yeah, you're going through a lot more noon that way. But for me, the important thing is the volume of water that it helps me drink. And then the, um, the other electrolytes that it's putting in. So I kind of like that idea. So let's get this one started. So that way we can get it dissolving and you guys can see. And I can never open them the first time. There we go. And so I do love this form factor. Anything that comes in like these sleeves and these little like tablets thing. And it does have like a little crease in the middle. So like if you did need to like break one and put it into a uh, water bottle, for example, like after a marathon and you're cramping up, you can certainly do that. So we'll plop that in there and uh, let that effervesce a little bit. So in terms of the other stuff that's in here, there is uh, an herbal blend of elderberry extract, organic ginger powder. There's that. Um, turmeric, which I, I like. Uh, yeah. And then there's, in terms of vitamins, there's vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, and uh, magnesium, selenium, chloride. Uh, yeah. Sodium bicarb potassium. So some, I think a good mix of just general electrolytes and some of that, uh, you know, that herb mix. So I like that. Um, it dissolves relatively quickly, but I'm going to give it a little bit more time because I could see on the bottom here, you can see it there and the tablet is still kind of at the bottom. So I'll give it a second. I will say though, that I think that um, noon tablets, they do the best job at dissolving. I've tried a couple of different brands of them and some of them, they each have a variety of success at dissolving well without being stirred. I don't want to have to stir it and I don't want to have to like shake it. I just want to be able to like plop it in and have it. Eh, I don't mind a little shake, I guess, but I don't want to have to get out. I don't want to have to dirty a utensil to be able to do it. That's, that's like my main thing. All right. Um, Frank says a lot of people whining that cross country didn't make the Olympics, but I don't get it. 2019 cross country world medalists were Chipta guy, Kaplimo, Kamawar. So 5,000, 10,000 and marathon guys anyway. Yeah. I mean, I think the, for, for me, like the difficulty of it, like cross country sounds like an event that really should be in the Olympics to me. I, I can under I can, I can understand that, especially cause like, Oh, why see it does, it does that all the time. And it's just my, I just have to hit a button and it comes back. But the thing that about it is like, there are certain events that I just, you know, I don't want to like disparage anyone else's Olympic journey or dream, but like equestrian uh, in 2020, do we still need that? Um, do we still need, I mean, is dr dressage isn't part of it, is it? It's just like the regular, like the horse racing part, right? But, but so it's like, it's weird like that we have that horse event and it's the only horse event. We don't make them run any other events, right? So like, that's kind of strange they're bringing in breakdancing for Paris, right? I don't understand that. Uh, that misses the mark for me a little bit. I, I'm not saying it's not difficult. I'm not saying it's not entertaining to watch, but I'm just, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. The other thing that, that, that I think is just really strange is the idea that um, cities don't want to compete for the Olympics anymore because of the fact that so many cities lose so much money on it. How do you lose money on it? I think that like the way that the sponsorship deals are structured, it makes it hard for cities to make money in it. I think that there's many ways to make money on it, but it's so locked up with the title sponsors. I think that's gonna be a problem going forward. But those deals are like decades long, my understanding is. So I don't know, there's a lot of things I think that are wrong with the Olympics, but yeah, but cross country not making it. Uh, I mean, there's got cross country. You got five and 10 though. That's the thing. You already got a five and a 10. And I don't really think of a cross country as a summer event either. So that's another thing. I'm not sure. 
Uh, Chris Yao says, <laughs> I love this picture too, by the way. Uh, Chris Yao says, I've been taking those new and immunity for about a month. What I can remember, when I can remember to. LOL. <laughs> uh, awesome. Frank says, the blue noon with caffeine made me feel nauseous the one time I took them. Oh, I don't think these have, uh, do these have caffeine in them? Uh, I don't think either of these immunity ones have caffeine in it. I'm not sure. That's the other thing that like, as much as I do like the, my favorite one, it's like a mango citrus or something like that, that does have caffeine in it. It's like the one of the running ones. The fact that it has caffeine in it means I can't take it like at night or I don't want to take it at night, which is when I like to do a lot of my hydrating. Not that I prefer to do it then. It's just when I end up remembering to do it. All right. Cheers, everybody. To whatever you're drinking for happy hour today. We made it to Friday. Awesome. Mm. This tastes better than I remember. This is nice. Um, it kind of has like, there's like a film that's on top of it. Again, it's kind of how it dissolved. And it makes it feel like it's going to be a little bit, uh, almost like a, you know, you ever have something like, you ever have a drink, like a recovery drink or a sports drink of some sort, and it just tastes a little bit like, um, I don't know, like I what I would imagine like a ladle full of like lake water would taste like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes it just has that, like there's a thickness to it. it when you're looking at this, it looks like there's going to be a thickness to it, but it tastes, it tastes good. And, there, it, and it's not thick. It doesn't taste like zero lake water taste at all. That is uh, pretty good. Uh, and it said, hi, Kapuzi and everybody. Hope buddy got on well yesterday. Yeah, he was, he was pretty good. He, one of them, one of his uh, like uh, vaccines was a shot and the other was something that they had to squirt into his mouth. And um, the first one, the vet, you know, used the alcohol swab and then like poked him with the the needle, like kind of like, I guess like in the armpit it would be, or like, I don't know, like almost towards like the traps um, back here, like down, down in this area right here. And uh, when he got poked there, he was facing the vet and I was kind of like behind him. And when he got poked, he just looked at me like, what, why are we doing this? He was just kind of like, mm. he was grum like grumbling at me. So I thought that was pretty funny. And then he wasn't happy about having to eat the other medicine that they had to squirt in his mouth. So he was a little bit mm, worked up after everything yesterday. He did a lot of napping, but I think he's fine today. All right. Philip says, happy, happy hour, everyone. Short 5.8K with Lara. Oh, nice. At lunchtime. As a vet, cleaned her in the morning. Now sitting over the gin leftovers from yesterday's virtual Christmas party. Ah, that's nice. <laughs> I wouldn't really, I've never really thought of it as gin leftovers, but you know, I feel like it's always uh, kind of a laudable uh, or like praiseworthy task to you know be the one that takes care of the leftover. So I suppose you know that carries over to the Christmas party libations. So. Good, good on you. <laughs> uh, Chris, yes, where's Sean Marshall? I don't think I've seen him around in a, a few days. He had to leave. Early. He was here on Wednesday. Was he here when? He was here Wednesday. And then he said he had to take off for a little bit, right? Hmm. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, <clears throat> Frank says, so when your Cyclops dog does something wrong, do you say, no, nobody? Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, I just say no when he's well, when he does something wrong, <laughs> that's funny. You know, the, do the doctor was like, so how's he been? And this is the doctor that he, I mean, cause we've been back here in Iowa a couple of times, like enough that, you know, he's had enough visits there and he's, I think we've seen two out of the three vets that are there. I think the third vet, I don't think she sees dogs. The other two definitely do though. And, um, but, uh, so he, he, so he maybe may have remembered him or maybe not. And he's like, how's buddy been doing? And I was like, when was the last time you saw him? Oh yeah. Well, he lost his eye since the last time you saw him. He goes, I could see that. <laughs> and I was like, since other than that, he's doing great. He's got an ear infection, I think, you know? So, uh, yeah. So there's that. William Lee says, I know I'm late to the party, but I tried Power Run Plus today. Found it simultaneously soft, yet firm in a really nice, comfy way. Looking forward to logging the miles in the Triumph. I agree, William. I ran in them today, and it's been nice. Um, 
it hasn't, you know, so far so good, knock on wood, um, getting back in the Sauconies has not been a problem for me. I'm just thinking with the glutes activated now, they're not sleepy anymore. I feel like I'm doing okay. I feel like I can handle uh, that hint of stability that's in those shoes. Jameson Murphy asks, will you ever come back to Chicago? Soon. I mean, I don't know about soon, but like, you know, first people in the UK got their vaccines. And remember we talked about it on Wednesday. Like I was like, I hope that after the first person gets a vaccine, that they do the thing where everyone applauds as they leave. Like when you buy a new iPhone, they did that. They did that for those people. So I think that's amazing. Um, so things are starting. There was a JB Pritzker, governor of Illinois, did a press conference today talking about the plan for Illinois once they start getting their shipments and stuff. I mean, I'm not going to get one for a while because there's no need for me to get one um, immediately. I and mean, there's no pressing need. I'm not in a high risk category and I'm not a frontline worker. So um, it'll still be a while. But, you know, the sooner that stuff happens, the sooner that I can get in line. You know, and here's the other thing, like, I know that there's a big push. Um, I know there's a very big push to like convince more people to get the vaccine. And um, I'm also like, but at the same time, like we have like, uh, not a shortage, but there's a limited supply of vaccine. So like, is it a huge problem that so many people don't want to get it? Because I feel like it solves like, a, I mean, like, all right, if you don't want it, then let everyone else who wants it get it. I know that there are certain like uh, certain communities where they might need it really badly. And there might be certain historical reasons why they would be reluctant to try a new medicine given by the government. But I, so I can understand that. So there's exceptions to that. But for the most part, like if people around here in an area where, you know, people still even under statewide, I mean, we only recently got a statewide mandate in Iowa for masks. In this state, like I'm like, oh, you guys don't want to take the vaccine? Great, maybe I'll take mine here. You know, I don't know. J Pod said, excited to get my vaccine in a few weeks. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Lucas Lily said, Kofuzi, when's going to be the next run on the Adios Pro? Oh, here's the thing. So I was going to run in them tomorrow, put some marathon miles in. I like that workout I did last week. Um, three three times three miles at marathon effort. And, um, and yeah, exactly. Carlos says, says Alpha Fly versus Adios Pro. Um, that's the idea. So I was going to do the Adios Pro one on Saturday and then the Alpha Fly one on Wednesday. I've been doing two workouts a week. <clears throat> and I thought I would do that. But it's been rain. Basically, it started raining on my run this morning. And a couple hours ago, it switched over to snow. We're under some sort of snow advisory here. We're going to get between four and six inches of snow over like the next day. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to run in the Adios Pro, let alone do a workout in them um, tomorrow. So we'll see. Now, I might have to move that to Sunday. But either way, hopefully I'll get it over the weekend. If I do it on Sunday, the Sunday temperatures are going to be like 10 degrees when I go running. So like it's going to be cold. But we'll get it done. So yeah, it'll be Saturday and Wednesday. So hopefully like next Thursday we'll have that comparison video. I think it's going to be close. I'm, I don't know which one's going to come out on top. All right. Someone said, uh, or McGowan said, how did you come up with the name Kofuzi? Uh, it's, um, it's a nickname I gave myself in college. So it's pretty, pretty lame, but I was studying East Asian, Asian religions, just taking an intro course. And I learned about Confucius and that's the Anglicization of, uh, Kung Fu Tzu. Or at least that's how I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but Kong is, was his last name. Fu Tzu was, ma is a, translate to master teacher. So I was like, Kung Fu. So that's kind of like Ko. So I'm going to be Ko Fuzi and make it like super, I like make it like Americanized. So that's where it comes from. It's an old, you know, like self-imposed. What does it call it? Self-imposed nickname. Yeah. Uh, Scott says, would it be okay if I go for a run now and watch this after dinner? I've been on the phone all day. No problem, Scott. That's why it's still up. You know, I don't, you know, they stay up there. So you can totally um, go for a run now. I mean, especially if weather's going to be an issue, you know, I'd say go do it. Uh, all right. Let's see. Um, someone is asking, uh, oh, let's talk about this. Keith Hastern says, hey, Kofuzi, I'm a product manager for Reebok Running. Thanks for the 100 mile grow update. Glad you're enjoying them. Hi, Keith. Um, awesome. Thanks for stopping by today. And yeah, I've been really enjoying that shoe. It's 
it's nice. I just feel like, especially for the temperatures out right now, it's like putting on one of those, uh, those what is it, Irish sweaters, like the cable knit, you know, it just feels comfy. And then that midsole underneath, really enjoy it. So I, I, I've been enjoying my miles in that shoe and I'll definitely be buying more Reebok shoes in the future because of that. It's a good shoe, very good shoe. Um, someone was asking about, um, let's see where I can find it. Someone, um, but I, this isn't it, but, um, I think maybe it was Scotty B. Oh yeah, here we go. Scotty B says, Hey, I had a fun, a fun night last night, watched Christmas vacation and order a Coros Pace 2. Nice. Yeah. And that is the, um, uh, the Coros Pace 2 is the, what's it called? The Kipchoge watch. Yeah. So, um, and someone was asking me if I was going to get that. Um, I'm probably not going to get it because I recently reviewed the Coros Apex and I feel like um, I'd be more interested in if there's an update to the Apex because the Pace 2, it was a massive upgrade from the Pace 1. Like the Pace was, I feel like, a really good, really great value. You get a lot. It kind of like reminds me of the Garmin 245. Like looking at the specs, a really great value for what you're getting for the price. And then the Pace 2 was just like, whoa, they added so many more features to it um, that it just felt like it should have been another tier. Like if they made that like the Apex upgrade, I feel like people would have been like, yeah, all right. I mean, maybe it wouldn't have been a huge upgrade, but I just feel like it was really close on those two levels. So I, because I reviewed the Apex, unfortunately for me, right around the same time as the Pace 2 came out, I probably won't review the Pace 2. But it's hard not to be like, Hmm, I never liked white watches, but you know, Kipchoge's got a white watch and that looks pretty nice. <laughs> so I, the marketing is definitely getting to me. Um, all right. Chris Dyke says that tailwind recovery mix tasted like when you leave a powder drink in your shaker for days. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> the tailwind stuff, I think though, it grows on you. At first, I was like, Tailwind's okay. I don't understand why everyone's freaking out over this stuff. And then I was using it a lot over the summer, and I was like, yeah, I like this. This Tailwind's good. I like it. So, I mean, maybe the flavor is not there, but I think what's inside of it is is actually pretty good. I like it. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I know that flavor that you're talking about. Or not, I don't know which Tailwind recovery mix you're talking about, but like the feeling when you leave a powdered drink in your shaker. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Lucas Lily saying like, imagine how impossible to run with the Adios Pro on the snow. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how it goes. The thing is, the route that I pick that I like to run is like a half, about a half marathon, and part of that is going to be on dirt road. I mean, there's pretty much nowhere I can run here that isn't at least part on dirt road, and so, um, you know, I don't know how much they plow those dirt roads. So it's one thing to run on like a road that's been plowed and maybe has a little bit of snow still on it um, with the Adios Pro. That would be interesting in and of itself. But to run on like a dirt road that hasn't been plowed and there's six inches of snow on it, I don't know. It might just be a trail shoe and have fun kind of run for tomorrow and then I'll do it on Sunday. We'll see. Steve said, I ruined my Adios in bad weather. Cleaned them a few times, but still grubby. Mm, that's not promising at all. Oof. Uh, yeah. Mr. Random says, yo, Kavuzi, how do you get such great footage in low morning light? Um, I'm glad you think it's great. I would love it if I could get better quality low light footage, but, um, my settings are on the GoPro are, uh, I use the 2.7 K at, uh, at 120 frames per second. And I, everything else is set to auto. And if it's really dark, and I know it's going to be really dark the entire time, then I will shoot at 1080 at 120 frames per second. I know at 1080, I can go up to 240, but then that makes, I need a lot of light to be able to feed the camera 240 frames per second and make it look good. So like, that's what I'll do is I, I might reduce either the frame rate or the resolution. I re would reduce the resolution first before reducing frame rate because, you know, like, I, I like I like at least 120 frames per second for GoPro footage. If you try like, you know, and I, I don't think that you're losing a ton. I mean, I guess from going to like 1080, 120 to 1080, like 60 would probably help you out even more. 
But like going from like 1080 60 to 1080 30, I don't think you're going to gain that much, but you're going to lose a lot in terms of the ability to slow the footage down. So that's kind of where I would probably draw the line. Although lately I haven't really found the need to go below 1080 and 120 frames per second. So, um, Dr. Funk1216 says, is it better to do an easy day with a speedy shoe or a speed day with an easy shoe? Or do you think it doesn't matter a whole lot what you run easy days in? Um, I, well, I think it depends on the shoe. It depends on the shoe. Cause like, I don't know, like the SL20, I wouldn't want to do in an, on an easy day so much, but the Boston nine, I could do it, you know? So it depends. And then an easy day shoe doing speed, like the Pegasus, I'm not sure if you would, everyone would call that an easy day shoe or a beacon. I haven't tried the three yet. It's, I still need to film it, the, the B roll, and then I'll run in it. Maybe I'll run in that. No, I probably won't run in it for the first run in the snow. Well, maybe I will. That could be fun. Um, but a beacon, you know, I would certainly do an easy day. I, that could do for speed work. So it just, it really depends. Mm. Oh, Jay, Remy says, get the mountain bike. There are loads of fun in the snow. That's an idea. I like that idea a lot. Oh, I have been really tired. I've been, like all these workouts, like I've ramped up really fast. So like um today's workout i was like oh i don't really want to go fast so like i was only yeah i was like my heart rate was like in the 130s for today's run because i was like i just don't feel like pushing it any harder than that uh, i don't know if you guys can hear that but the baby's having fun with grandma i don't know what they're playing down there all right i'm gonna get this other tab dissolving as i finish the first uh noon hydration immunity um but yeah maybe i should get the bike out that's a great idea I've never had so much hard difficulty opening these things until these two. They are, why are they so hard? All right, this one is orange citrus. I have a, I have a feeling I'm really going to enjoy this one because I tend to enjoy orange citrusy flavors. So there's that one. All right, my goal for today is to not to knock down a glass off of that ledge. <laughs> we'll see if I could do it. I I don't know if there's anything very different in these uh, compared to the last one. Similar elderberry extract. Ginger powder. It doesn't taste like ginger, by the way. Um, turmeric. Yeah, and then a lot of the other vitamins. I think it's the same. Although this one has vitamin E. I don't remember if this one had vitamin E in it. Oh, it does. Yeah, so seems like the same kind of like combination of things that are in here. But tasty. I can drink. You, I get. You I mean, it says you can drink up to six a day. I'm guessing it's because of the vitamin D that's in there. That would be my guess. Or can you overload on magnesium in a day? Maybe that's what it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, drink a couple of these a day, really tasty, helps with the hydration. I like it. Mm, Carlos says, Kofuzi, I've been having a little heel pain, uh, after on the treadmill, I stepped way too hard on my forefoot. Hmm. Any suggestions on what to do? Interesting. Um, hmm. I mean, the one thing you could do is you could ice it just to, if there's any extra inflammation in there that's causing discomfort there, you can ice it. Um, and then before you run, the next time you run, you can warm it up. I've got a little bit of pain in my left forefoot. I think just, well, I think it's because of the Ultra Torrent 4.5 plush. That's when it started. But I just, I don't want to completely blame that shoe, but that's what really set it off. Um, but I think it's because of all the workouts and mileage that I've ramped up on real quick. So I think, you know, the answer is I would switch to something more cushioned. If you have a more cushioned shoe in your rotation um, to try and be a little bit easier on it. That's why I've been trying to run into triumph a little bit. Um, that's what I ran in today. Um, so that's something you can do. Uh, otherwise, I think if it's just something like an, a trauma type of injury, then I think just letting it relax and rest for a little bit might be the, the best way to do it. Um, I mean, I guess you could see if you're, if you can run through it, but if it's something that's just continually a problem, then you might want to ease up on it just for a day or two and see if that makes a big difference. Um, all right. I run on beer says, Oh, and I wouldn't expect this from someone whose name is I run on beer, but he says, I'm a big fan of the new immunity. <laughs> I usually alternate those with the vitamin mix. Ah, oh, cool. See, I've, um, I've had a couple of the vitamin mixes, but I always just felt like, 
when it when it says like vitamin on it, I I want it to be like I should only drink one of these a day. But when for all the other ones, I'm like I want to be able to drink four or five a day. <laughs> oh, that's weird. I didn't. I never thought of it that way. But hmm, immunity and vitamin mix. I might have to try some of those. Uh, all right. William Lee said, if you only had $300 to spend on shoes to get you through the year, what would you buy? This is a great question. I love it. Um, I feel like there should be a little like web applet that does that, right? Um, kind of like, uh, what do they do? Like, think of it like a salary cap. You know, when people are doing drafts, they should be able to do this with shoes. Oh, oh, this is, I love this question. $300, um, I would probably buy um the endorphin speed so that puts me at 160 back so then i only got 140 to get me through the rest of the year um i would try to go and find a pair of epic reacts if i can get those cheap and then an sl20 because you can get those super cheap too uh so that that would be that would be three that would, those would be the three. Oh man mm. yeah that's a, that's a tough one 300 dollars. it seems like a lot but um <laughs> frank says five of the boston nines Ooh, that's see there's so many ways you can go with this one mm. yeah oh this was a fantastic question i'm gonna i'm I, i'm gonna definitely have to like put, we're gonna have to put this out on twitter only 300 this is a great question mm. it's tough it's tough um, yeah. Cause like, if you could only buy, if you had $300, like, let's say you got $300 total for like gifts for Christmas or the holidays. And it's like January one and on Jan based on like, or today's prices, like what can you get? Ooh, I like that one. Blexen says, have you seen the Boston 10 leak? I don't think I have. Yeah. Mm, the, mm, that's interesting. Uh, my, I'm also curious to see whether there will be another Boston nine, kind of like last year they did the Boston eight and then there was a Boston eight with light strike. I wonder if they'll do that, but I'm thinking that since there isn't going to be an eight, like that's already been decided, right? Like the Boston marathon is not going in April. So like, I think that because of that, they probably won't have another Boston, but maybe they bring the Boston 10 early. I just think that they should move the Boston 10 release to like a month before, like it should come out in March every year. You know, I know that's a little bit, you know, not, not a ton of people are buying shoes in March and February, but I just think that for, to coincide with giving people enough time to train for their marathons in it. So maybe it needs to be end of January. I don't know. Oh, Jody says cowbell for, I run on beer for a PB in the mile the other day. Awesome. Six minute personal best and not throwing up. There you go. Always a win. <laughs> uh, and I run a beer says I've absolutely put noon in my beer before people do that. I guess if you had like a wheat beer and you put an orange one in there, I could, I could definitely like, that. I'm going to, Oh, why didn't anyone tell me about that? I should have done that for today. I kind of got like a Coors Light from downstairs or a Miller. And then that would have been nice, I think. Hmm. I'm going to try that next time. Um, Jeff Elliott says, Boston 10 on Google Images looks interesting. And whereas it Blitzen said it, it will probably be an Audios Pro Style Trainer, maybe like the Tempo next to Alpha Fly. The pick suggests it. Hmm. Then where does the Audios go? I don't know. I just feel like the Adios is, I don't know. It got too fast for its own good. It's too, um, too low to the ground for me. I just can't run in it. Jerome Chai asking for a five minute mile. No, no. Uh, I think I'm in the five forty. So that's, that's a big, that's a, that's a tall order for me to get to five minutes. Um, <laughs> Run Frank, the, the Adidas might call him the Boston Corona edition. Colorway is called Lockdown. <laughs> uh, oh, that's funny. <clears throat> uh, Jameson Murphy says, how do you feel about premium matches like Casper, Purple, Nectar, and Tough and Needle for athletes for better rest? 
Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I've not tried any of those before. Personally, I, um, I like a very firm mattress to sleep on. Uh, and occasionally, um, in other words, regularly here at my in-laws house, I'll sleep on the floor. Cause like a, uh, a bed, most, a lot of beds are just too squishy for me. And I wake up, I don't get good sleep. My back hurts all day. Um, nothing painful. I just kind of feel it and I'm not getting rest. And even if I feel like I'm getting good rest, if I sleep like three, four days in like just not a very firm bed, I'll just be tired and I won't be able to figure out why. And I'm like, Oh, I'll just sleep on the floor tonight and I'll be, I'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, Daniel M says a lot of camping YouTubers do videos like camping setup for X dollars. I think a good video would be how to spend your first $300 getting into running. I think the, yeah, I like that too. I was thinking about it the other day. Um, and not to like, I, I don't mean it as a flex, but more as like, probably more as like how ridiculous am I? Uh, because you know, I run with the, the GoPro. And so I was thinking like, I'm running with a GoPro in $250 racing shoes. I've got a, a Vantage V2 on one arm, a, um, a Whoop on the other, uh, AirPods Pro. And I was like, this is a lot of stuff. And then I was like, oh, and I was wearing like expensive tights that day. I was like, oh boy, this is a pretty expensive outfit for today. Who said running was cheap? So I was like, yeah. So I've definitely got, like, there, it's easy to go overboard. So I think that that's an interesting idea. Hmm. That's a great, yeah, great idea. I don't have to think about this a little bit. Or McGowan says, does stretching and flexibility have a substantial impact on performance? I will say yes. As someone, <laughs> I think my wife said it the best. Um, well, she's got the quote from her boss. Her boss was like, everything was great until I turned 40 and then I fell apart. And so not that I fell apart, but like all these things that I was, used to be like, I don't need those things. Now I'm like, oh, I do that every day now. And so stretching and flexibility are something that I work on every day. The main reason being um, is that I feel like my runner's knee issue came down a lot to um, came down a lot to uh, glute inactivation. I just wasn't using them. And then what I realized is that it kind of like by not having the activated glutes, everything kind of like instead of running tall and running like how I was supposed to, I was kind of like crumbled up into like a little, let's see, whenever there's something to talk fidget with, I'll fidget with it. I felt like I was like running crumbled up. And then once I kind of like did some exercises, loosen that stuff, I was like, Oh, well, I feel good, you know? And so, um, now I find that after a run, if I'll do some additional, just a couple quick stretches here and there that helps me stay limber, you know? And so that the next day my warm up stretches and exercises that I do, I feel even better. And so it just becomes like a really good cycle. And I've been, I've been, uh, I've been running great since then. So like, I, I think it does. I think it's not so much that like, if you stretch 20 minutes a day, that equates to over the course of a cross country season, five seconds on a PR. I don't think it works that way. I think it works in the sense of like, it'll help make sure that your workouts are quality. It'll help make sure that you're recovering well, and it'll help you stay on the roads and helping you be injury free. So that's kind of how I'm, I'm feeling about it. Uh, me, he says though, that too much stretching makes you less springy. They say it could be less beneficial. Yeah. I think that going for me, going from a position of, I don't really stretch. It's going to take a long time for me to see diminishing returns on introducing more stretching. And I'm kind of lazy about it. So, um, I feel like I'm going to be like, Oh, I'm doing this too long every day. I'm going to hit that point way before I hit diminishing returns, I think. So like, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it yet. Um, Shannon says, happy hour. My house is consisting of a cooler full of ice and I put and cough me to warm me back up. Cheers. Awesome. Shannon. Shannon's been killing it at the gym with those pull-ups though. I saw on the, in our Instagram story. Uh, WWW says, how often do you eat meat? In parentheses, if you do. Um, I, I'm, I'm basically only nominally a vegetarian, uh, cause we'll eat seafood. So, um, pescatarian, and then I will occasionally eat meat, uh, usually in social situations. So if like someone's made dinner for me, you know, if I ever, back when you could go to someone's house for dinner, um, and they made meat, then I'll eat meat. I won't eat a ton of it, but you know, so it, it happens for Thanksgiving. I had a serving of, of turkey. Um, so it happens, but I eat, you know, eggs and dairy every day, probably. So, um, 
daily, I guess is the right answer. But um, Michael Polan, I think had some uh, food writer, um, had probably the, the best way to think of it is to, um, you know, eat a variety of things, mostly plants. So I, I try to subscribe to that. Um, all right. Chrissy T says, got a bit of a tight slash strained Achilles at the moment. Any recommendations? Um, I mean, you could do like calf stretches if it's about uh, about it being like um, tight. So like the kind where you like you put your foot up against like a wall or on a stair or standing on the edge of a stair and let your heels hang over it, like that kind of thing might loosen it up. Um, the other place that I'd probably refer most people to is Bob and Brad. So if they're Bob and Brad are the two most famous physical therapists on the internet and they have pretty much a video on everything. They've been, they're physical therapists. They've been making videos for like eight or nine years now, millions of subscribers. So they'll, they'll have something and they'll, they'll be able to direct you more than I could. All right. Oh, Shannon says, I spend more time stretching five minutes into the run than before. So you run a little bit and then stretch or you stretch, run, and then stretch more. Ooh. Super helpful for mobility if you're stiff. That makes a lot of sense. I've been thinking about it a lot as terms of like oil in a car, you know, like um, just like you don't want to like be trying to redline the engine like the minute or the second after you turned it on, you know. So I guess maybe that metaphor won't make as much sense in the world of like electronic cars. But for engines that have oil, um, that's kind of how I like to think of it. It's like you want to like you know, get the oil to the right temp. You want to get everything kind of like ready to go before you really push it. And I like the idea of stretching into the run, but I do like strength exercises. So I'm getting movement. So I think maybe I'm kind of doing the same thing as you, Shannon, in effect. All right, let's try this stuff. Orange citrus immunity noon. Again, it's got that film on it. And this time it looks like a happy face. I can't show it to you guys because then I would spill it, but it's like a two eyes and a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm drinking a face. Uh, can you guys see it? I don't know if you guys can see it. No. Anyway. That's good. Oh, that's taste, tasty. Um, you know, it's like, like Sunny D. Probably not very much. If I actually tried Sunny D next to it, it probably wouldn't taste anything like it. But it's got that like sweet but none of the sour um, acid of actual orange juice but it's got that orange flavor really nice uh <laughs> review says santa said hi everyone awesome that's cool uh <laughs> martha said that's the crema <laughs> on the new <laughs> that's funny <laughs> uh ben y says i usually only stretch my hip flexors a lot before i run yeah i think that everyone probably has their thing i don't think you know like i see these videos for like you know, here's the routine every runner should do. Like, I don't know that I agree with that. And I'm sure, and I, I know that you're making a title for a YouTube video. And, and I, so I, you, you take it with a grain of salt, but like, I think everyone's got their thing that, that they need to work on or that they, that they could benefit from working on before run. And for me, it's a lot of glute and then just like really deep knee bends. So like even my like lateral squats, I've turned it into basically a lateral deep knee bend. My squats aren't squats are like just getting it down as low as I can, opening up the hips a little bit. So like that's kind of what I've been. So stretching hip flexors too. Yeah. So I guess I should just say me too, but um, yeah. But I mean, you know, my, my running buddy, he works a lot on his calves and I think his Achilles, like, cause that's the part that gets really tight for him. He had a really bad heel injury. It took him out for like, about a year. He just, I don't, I don't think he was going to see the right doctors. He was going to see the doctors that said, Oh, your foot hurts from running. Stop running. You know? So like, that's, you know, that's kind of like the problem that he had. So, um, but yeah, everyone has their thing. I think. Um, I run says pro tip, mix the lemon lime noon with tequila for hydrating cocktail, <laughs> much less messy than mixing with beer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> next happy hour we'll have to do that i'll have to order some lemon lime noon i don't think i have any lemon lime noon um tequila we'll go for it <laughs> um all right and then runner dre says 
what is your routine? Um, I, I made a video about it. I'll, I need to do like a better one. Um, but I have a leg strength routine that has turned up into my, um, my morning warm up, and I do it before I go run now. And I'll post a link to it in the description or the vi the title of the video on YouTube is commenting my leg strength routine or something like that. So that's what I've been doing. No, it doesn't take any it's mostly single ex ex exercises and no weights. That's kind of my style, I think. Um, Jeff Elliott says, I do a quick three move thing from redefining strength that is real quick that I like a lot. That I, yeah, I like that kind of stuff. I like it that way better. And then um, there's there's this other guy. Uh, I'll, I'll let you guys know. Um, I'll either try to put it in the description of this video or I'll, I'll mention, I'll put it in the description of tomorrow's live stream so that we can talk about it. But him and he's a guy out of, uh, out of, I think England. And then there's a woman that does a similar technique. It's a lot of like flowing movements. So it's not Pilates, it's not yoga, it's faster, but it's not like isometric exercises either. It's kind of like a mix between those two. I don't know what that style of movement is called, but I, I'm captivated by it. I think it looks beautiful, but I also like doing it or trying to emulate what I see on Instagram uh, to some extent. Um, not that I'm doing a lot of that, but like just thinking about connecting movements together a little bit more, I really like. And so um, I've been enjoying that. And the, the, the woman that does it, she, I don't think she has YouTube. She's on Instagram, Francesca Fit. I don't know if you guys follow her. She's out of, I think she's out of Austin, um, but just, I, it it makes a lot of sense to me from like something that I think could supplement running really well. Phil Ortman asks, are you a Sonic or a Mario guy? I feel like there's a right answer here if you consider yourself a runner. Really? Because I'm a Mario guy. I love Sonic. Um, but uh, the thing I don't like about it is that sometimes it just feels like the game goes and I'm not doing anything. So I feel like I'm along for the ride and I enjoy the visual stimulus. But I also feel like a lot of times I'm not playing it. The game is just running. I feel not not running. The game is just like going. It's just doing its thing. And I feel like it's just bouncing around like pinball. I don't like pinball. I don't know. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion. That orange citrus. That might be my new favorite flavor. That's good. Mmm. I think maybe orange citrus from when I don't want caffeine and then the mango tropical or whatever it is that I have made. Maybe it's mango citrus when I do want caffeine. That's a good one too. That would be a good one too. Tasty. Oh, I really like that one. Uh, but what are you guys, Sonic or Mario? I think part of it too is like, um, is, is there a um, socioeconomic distinction to that too? Cause I feel like I knew a lot of kids that had Nintendo, but it seemed like only the rich kids had so had Sega growing up. Because I, I mean, I, I grew up with like Super Mario Brothers, and the like the first Sonic the Hedgehog. So like all these newer versions, I don't know. But um, but I remember like lots of people had Nintendo. Not as many people were fortunate enough to have a Sega. That was a little bit more. I don't know if it was more expensive or what, or just maybe not as popular. I don't know. Um. Carlos says, I do mostly static such, uh, and moving stretches and warm ups before a run. Yeah, that's what that's what I like too. I like to, I mean, I also like to be on the floor and kind of feel out what feels tight too. Um, like I was today, uh, the baby and I were watching, um, what were we watching? I think we were watching The Grinch. The, the one with um, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch in it, that one, and uh, Rashida Jones. The new one. That's I like that one. I don't like any of the other ones. I like the original cartoon, and I like that one. We were watching that, and I was on the floor, and I, the way I was sitting, I was like, oh, my left hip is really tight. I don't know what it is, but the thing that comes across over from behind and across kind of like, I don't know, below the iliac crest? I don't know. It just comes over towards the groin. There was something back there that was super tight, and I was like, oh, while I'm sitting on the floor, I'm going to massage that little knot. And also move around until I can get it loosened up. So like that's the kind of thing I like to do too in the morning. <laughs> Jason Dahl said, I've been telling myself to start stretching for about 10 years now. I need to actually start doing so. Yeah. I mean, hopefully it ever doesn't catch up to you. It caught up to me for sure. And so now I'm a regular stretcher. <laughs> J 
Jeff says, my first console was a PS3 and the Wii. Got them the same year. It was all PC Master Race growing up. Oh, okay. The first PC game I remember playing, I'm sure, I'm sure I played a couple more before this, but the first PC game I remember playing was Wasteland. The game was available on DOS. And it was super easy to um, pirate games back then because you just had to copy the discs. And that made it super easy. So I remember when, like, one of my friends had like a computer with two five and a quarter floppy drives. And I was like, oh, there's so much we could do with this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a, yeah, I'm a little bit older than that. Uh, and Jason says the 10 years of not stretching is it's totally catching up to him. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. I was hoping it wouldn't, you know, <clears throat> uh, Brian, he said my first gaming console was called the Odyssey two at a Pac-Man style game called Casey Munchkin. Whoa. That's cool. I've never heard of that. Interesting. TD I said first PC game, Oregon trail. Mm. You know, I don't think I ever played that game. Everyone has like so many memories of it. I I just don't think I did. But I'm not sure. Um, where'd it go? Oh, it just just jumped. There we go. Cheng reaction. Cheng reaction says, "I'm a game kid and have Nintendo and Sega when little, but I never liked Sonic. Don't know why." Hmm. I felt like people that had Sega though were super into Sonic. Hmm. That's interesting. Keith Stern says, plus one for Oregon Trail. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure I could find it to play like online, right? That maybe, I don't know. Do we have to get into like a, a run club Twitch stream now and play play Oregon Trail? <laughs> and uh, Yeah, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> Kurt says, leisure suit, Larry. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, Rotor and Risa played Space Invaders at the mall before Atari. My first gaming system was Pong. Uh, I remember that. I remember like visiting someone who like uh, my parents, my, my, we would go visit like their friends. And they like, I remember one time like their kids had an Atari and I was like, what is this? Never let me leave here. And Christian says Frogger. Yeah. I remember playing Frogger. Um, I remember the, the earliest memories I have of like video game systems were even before the, the Atari joystick that had the one button, so you held it like this and you had one button. There was the one with the not the dial, right? It was really weird. You played with it like this and you held it in one hand and you dialed it like that. Was that only to play Pong? I don't remember, but that 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 is something that I remember from a long time ago. Um, Danny J said, I only played Oregon Trail in school. There was a game that we played a lot. And sometimes I'm like, I think it was Oregon Creek Trail that we played, but there was a game I remember distinctly. It was like in the fifth grade that, like, any time that we had like kind of like free time in our, or not that you have that much free time as a fifth grader, but any time we had like kind of like your choice, everyone like fought over who got to play the game. Hmm. Um, or McGowan says, "How long do you plan on doing the streams until it's become part of my routine?" Uh, I I don't know. I mean, it's been a long time. I like it. So like, I, and I guess now that I'm a, a pro YouTuber, um, I don't have any plans of not doing them. I was thinking about it today though. It's like at a certain point, the three o'clock time slot is going to conflict with when I need to pick up kids from school. Cause at some point, God willing, they will go back to school. And um, so that'll have, maybe it'll just change. Um, so it might be earlier if anything. So but, you know, I'd like to keep doing it. So we'll see. Um, Kurt C said, did anyone ever play the Atari Decathlon? The 400 was just painful. That was one, like, I, um, Nintendo had uh, an Olympic Games one where, like, basically everything was like A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, where you played it. You just hit it back and forth all the time, and they were really hard to play. And then there was the jump pad, like the, the, the mat that you can jump run on, and everyone got it on their hands and knees and just slapped it. There was that. Um, but yeah, I feel like, is it time to bring back? Uh, do they make like r like track and field games anymore for like video games? Is that is that a thing? <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. 
And it says, uh, the first computer game I played on was a friend's Sinclair ZX Spectrum playing Manic Miner. Mm, that's, that sounds a little bit... I know, I've never heard of that before. All right, one more here. Um, let's see. Let's do one more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Keith Esther says, yeah, there was a Nintendo track and field game with the mat that you ran. I, I remember that. And then I remember um, one time, this was like as an adult, this is when I was like in law school, where we were out, uh, I was out, uh, me, my wife, and my running buddy, and his wife, uh, and a couple other friends. Uh, my friend that lives up in Minneapolis, the one that we visited when we were up there. Um, him and his, well, they were, they were dating at the time. We were out drinking, and then they were like, do you guys want to come back to our apartment and play on the Nintendo power mat? And I was like, what? Yes. And then, um, our friend, his girlfriend goes, yeah, and I'll make some cheese dip in the, in a mini crock pot. And I was like, this is like the night out of my dreams. This was great. So I had a really fun time and uh, a lifelong friendship was forged that night. <laughs> uh, only half kidding about that, but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I've been to all their weddings, and yeah, they're, they're good people. Not their wed, not that they've been married, but my, you know, my running buddy and his wife. I went to wed their wedding. I went to my other friends' wedding. So yeah, good times on that Nintendo mat, even as an adult. <laughs> all right, I think that's a good place to leave it there for today. Um, tomorrow, I don't know if I'll do a, a video tomorrow morning. I'm going to do the top five Max Cushion shoes for tomorrow. I don't know that I'll be able to get it out by tomorrow morning. So it might be out tomorrow morning. It might be out Sunday morning, one of the two. But in either event, we'll do another live stream here, 3 p.m. Central Time, right on YouTube. Hopefully I'll see you guys back here. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody.